people, I just want to say that uh, I am happy uh, to be in church here. And I would like to request that uh, Pastor Bulimo, when I come, don't call me a visitor because this is my home church. Nimekuja um, nyumbani. So at any time that I'm here, know I have come as one of you uh, and not as a visitor. Uh, I was listening to Mbeche there. Mbeche was talking of the rubble. Uh, other schools call them monos. Uh, in Nairobi school, they were called rubble. In uh, Lenana, they were called rubble. Uh, so when you hear him talking about the rubbles, that means he was a mono when I was uh, winding up. But I'm happy t to see him here. And uh, it, it's true, I had a nickname, uh, Phantom, because I was, uh, uh, I was the fastest in 100 meters and 200 meters. And I left the school record there. So when you see me like this, I've gained a lot of weight, but in those days I was very slender and I could run very fast. That's why they called me the Phantom. Um, but I thank God that we are here today to be able to share a few moments uh, because the country is still facing a lot of challenges. The COVID menace is real. Um, and I really want to appeal to, to Kenyans that this thing is not a joke. Uh, even last night, uh, I was involved in trying to rush uh, some friend to go and get his brother admitted in one of the hospitals. And I'm saying it's not a joke because although we have just vaccinated as a country maybe about uh, two million people or thereabouts, the reality is that even if you have taken your two doses of the vaccine, please continue to exercise maximum restraint because some of those that are still suffering and are dying are those who have actually received both vaccines, both vaccinations. But the Delta variant, which is now the lethal one, can still get to you. So I'm pleading that we continue to take this thing very seriously. It is with us, and we just hope that the government will accelerate the vaccination um, to all Kenyans. We are seeing comparatively how other countries have vaccinated in huge millions, maybe 50% of their population, maybe even more. And uh, in Kenya, we have done very little. So the challenge for the government is to make sure that resources and time and commitment is set and focused on dealing with this COVID vaccination. The other thing that has come up recently is that uh, uh, the courts have pronounced themselves on this debate that has been with us for three and a half years, the BBI debate. The courts made a ruling. Now we must move forward. We must focus on the future. But the lessons that we must learn from the court rulings is that when you do not listen to each other, when leaders refuse to listen to each other, when they make themselves a one-man choir, when leaders just decide that it is their choir that will sing and nobody else should be listened to, the consequences are very grave. We have, as Kenyans, spent our energy and our resources for the last three and a half years talking about this thing, refusing to listen to each other, making it look like it's a one-way street, and now the courts have just put a stop to the entire thing. Some of you who are following this debate, you will recall in Bomas 1, I said that if we are engaging in a, going to engage in a conversation of this nature, Unless we are pulling everybody together, we are going to have difficulty and this document 
might turn out to be an elite document, a political elite document, and not a document that affects the Monainji. Now, when you listen to the rulings, some of the words that are used in bombers three years ago were some of the words that the judges were pronouncing in their judgment. I cautioned in Bomas 2 that the issue of independence of institutions is paramount and must be handled carefully. And I cautioned that if you try to get the executive to appoint an ombudsman to the courts, you'll be interfering with the independence of the courts. When I was in Bomas, some of the people were jeering because I had brought up that point. If you listen to the judgment of the president of the appeals court, Musinga, he said that when you introduce a situation of an ombudsman that interferes with the independence of the judiciary, you are altering the basic structure of principles of constitution. And therefore, they cannot allow that to pass. Had they listened when I was telling them that when you introduce such clauses, you're making it difficult along the way, maybe we would not be getting to where we are. So the lessons we have to learn is that we have to listen to each other. That's the lesson we should draw from this as a Kenyan people. But now we must move forward. We must focus on the economy. We must focus on job creation. We must reconstruct the dislocated lives of the people. Because of the COVID pressures. We must bring hope into the homes of our Kenyan people. We must dialogue as we move forward so that we can have free and fair elections in 2022. We must put resources to strengthen the IBC. We have, as a nation, got to pull together, listen to each other this time round so that we get things right. Let us do the things correctly. Competition will always be there. In politics, that is why you have a referee and the referee must be independent. We should not try and interfere with the independence of the IBC. Let us help them to do their job appropriately as we approach the election. And I want to urge the young men and women across the country, please, since the IBC has even said that they're going for vote, mass voter registration, they've even put out advertisements because they want to recruit young men and women who will now get involved in the mass voter registration. I want to urge you to do two things. Encourage young people who have the ability in every constituency to apply so that the IBC can take them on to get, do voter registration as we approach 2022. <clears throat> Secondly, we must now blow the trumpet to get the people who have not registered to come out and register. Let us blow the trumpet. Let us blow the horns. Let us beat the drums so that they can come out and register in large numbers. Chebukati said since 2017, they had only registered 140,000 new registers in the entire country. But there are 5 million new IDs 
that have been issued from 2017 to date. So there's a huge deficit of people who have IDs or who are yet to collect their IDs and are yet to find themselves on the voters register. So this must be a clarion call across the entire country. We want good leaders. We want people who will focus. We want to improve our agriculture. We want to be able to deal with the crisis that is coming because of the double intake in schools in 2023-2024 as you enter the new uh, competency-based curriculum. There's going to be a huge, huge surge in our schools. We will need to expand facilities. We will need to do, increase the teachers. So time is not on our side on some of these issues. But if we have resolve and we unite and we speak now without selfishness, we create an all-inclusive society, it will be better. Let us not make the mistake of thinking especially for politicians. Let us not think we are a one-man choir. Let us know that there are millions of Kenyans who must be part and parcel of the process of moving the country forward. So, hapo ndio, yu ndio adithi yangu siku ya leo. Mimi si kama mtoto wa pastor, vile nilivyo sema. Ye ya mesema yake, na mimi ni mesema yangu. So, I think I'll conclude there and thank the church once again for uh, allowing us uh, to share some moments. And as I repeat, be careful uh, with the COVID menace. It is still here. Take all the precautions uh, that ought to be taken. And uh, indeed, zile pesa ambazo zingeenda kwa mambo mengine kama hiyo nini campaign ya the BBI now that it's behind us. Okay, people may want to appeal, that is their wish. But when you now look at the constitutional timelines, uh, it may be an exercise in futility. It might be better uh, for them to acknowledge that the courts have ruled, and now we must move forward and move forward with the unity of purpose so that we can be strong and ready uh, for the challenges ahead. God bless.